much like we can translate, reflect, or rotate um, figures in the Cartesian plane, you can also transform algebraic functions. And you're going to do a lot of this next year. So we are going to be using absolute value functions. Though these transformation rules will apply to all functions, and we will try it with some other ones. Um, an absolute function, absolute value function looks like a V. And so what I want you guys to do, and you may need to hit pause in order to kind of follow along, but we're going to graph what is called a parent function. So where you're going to graph y equals the absolute value of x. And you're going to do that by just making a quick xy table. We're going to choose negative points and positive points. And remember, it's supposed to look like a v. So if we chose 0, when x is 0, so is y. All right? When x is 1, absolute value of 1 is 1. When x is negative 1, the absolute value of negative 1 also 1. So we're going to get those. Now, you should pick at least two other points that are positive and two other points that are negative to kind of get a feel for what this graph looks like. I'm going to use 4 and negative 4 and also 10 and negative 10. And you should hit pause and get this graph and see if it matches. Hopefully, when you do this, you get something that looks like the V we have here. You're going to also graph that same Y equals X on the other graph next to it. But we're going to try. I'm going to get rid of some of this out of the way. We're going to also graph the absolute value of X plus 3. And we're going to do it, I'm going to do it in a different color. This is the last time you will ever have to make an XY table for absolute value. If we choose something like 0, when X is 0, you would get absolute value of 0 plus 3. When X is 1, you would get absolute value of 1 plus 3 is 4. When the absolute value of negative 1, you would still get 1 plus 3 is 4. So you can see that there are matching points. We'll get one other set just so we can know what this V looks like. And we're going to get, if you plugged in 4, you would get 4 plus 3 is 7. And same thing, if you plugged in negative 4, it still comes out as 4. So if we get this graph, 0, 3, and then we go over 1 and up 4, here we are. We go out 4, we're going to go up to 7. And over here, same thing. If we put this into its little V shape, because we can definitely see what the bottom is, we're going to notice a certain pattern emerge. If you check out down below, the vertex of the new one is at 0, 3. Notice how there is 0 things in with that X, and you have plus three things on the outside. There is a relationship between this. So what I want you to do is I want you to hit pause and I would like you to re-graph this y equals absolute value of x and then plug in some points that will go with this. And I'm going to make a suggestion that you definitely for that xy table that you use maybe negative 10 negative 6, negative 5, and then um, maybe 0, 1, and we'll say 4. But also squeeze in negative 4. There's a reason I'm asking you to do all those. So hit pause, see if it comes out to be the same as mine. Okay, you can see where this went. Now, even though it says x plus 5, you're going to notice that this whole entire pink absolute value shifted to the left. Its vertex is negative 5, 0. Well, take a look. In with the x is of plus 5, but what would it take to make that 0? 
a negative 5. And notice how there's zero things happening outside of the absolute value. It does match up. So here are the rules so you never have to graph a fancy graph again once you know its parent function. Okay, so for a vertical shift, much like the one we saw in the first absolute value, take a quick peek. For a vertical shift, that's when you have a number that is outside of the parentheses or your absolute value. You're going to have the function plus a number C. That means you are going to shift C units up. And an example would be like what we had. Y equals the absolute value of X plus 3. It means you're going to shift up 3. All points will go up. If you have the function minus a number, you're going to be shifting C units down. And an example would be y equals the absolute value, um, or let's use a different one just so you can be used to seeing other ones. y equals x squared minus 10. That would mean that whatever an x squared looks like, everybody would shift down 10. So how do you get things to move side to side? Well, you can get a horizontal shift. Let's get a new color here. You can have a horizontal shift if you have a number inside the parentheses or the absolute value over here. So what's going to happen is we're going to put an example right here. If you have y equals the absolute value of x plus a number, you are going to shift C units left. It's the opposite of what you think it should be. Much like the point slope form of an equation, when we did the equation of a circle, what's in with the x is the opposite of what you think it should be. So the example we had above was y equals the absolute value of x plus 5. That's why the entire thing shifts five left. So I think you can imagine what happens when you have your function and you have a minus in with the x. We're going to be shifting c units to the right. And an example that doesn't use absolute value would be if you have y equals x minus 2 all squared. That's saying an x squared or a parabola, and it's just saying since that 2 is inside with the x, we're going to be shifting 2 to the right. Now the only other thing that you need to know is what happens when, um, let's use a new color, what happens when you have a negative outside of your absolute value, or if your leading coefficient is negative? Well, what happens is you get a reflection. It means that you're going to open down. So, let's say down. Opens down. And an example of that would be if you had a negative absolute value of x, instead of being a v, you would turn your v upside down. If you had a negative x squared, if you remember this from last year, it just means your parabola opens down. Now, the one thing that's weird is if you have an x cubed, you're going to learn what this looks like. It's just a little John Travolta action, going from down up forward. A negative of that would just be the opposite. Instead of starting low and ending high, start high and you end low. These work for every single function in the whole entire universe. And it will come in handy next year. But we're going to try just one of these together. You're going to save these for class tomorrow. But so you can see what we're talking about. If you look at y equals x minus 4. It's in with the x. So it is definitely going to be a horizontal shift. Now all you have to do is look up 
Well, what does it mean when it's a minus four? It's going to mean move four to the right. So if you remember an absolute value function with nothing in front goes from zero to 10 like that and again like this. Every point is just going to move four to the right. So you just scooch it over four spots. You know it just goes up one over one like this and you would just use a straight edge. Don't do it freehand like I am now. And you just connect it. And that's all it means. So bring your questions tomorrow and we'll see how this all goes.